Everyone, good morning. I am out of breath. Here I thought I was in shape, but uh, this hike is kicking my booty. It's good for me to push myself though. This has been a really fun hike so far this morning. It's really steep at points, so I am just gonna take a little break here and then I'll continue on my way. It's been fun. You know, there's been a lot of chickadees out this morning. I heard some towhees earlier, some northern flickers are hanging around. Saw some deer off in, the off in the distance. It's just been really, really good morning. I'm up here looking for long-tailed weasels. In last week's video, I was out in that rock slide area looking for them, and I never did, never did find any. I did see that American Martin, which was absolutely amazing, but I never did see the weasels. So this is another area that I've seen them in a couple times. So I'm up here just hiking, looking, and listening for them. You know, I consider myself so lucky and so blessed to be able to photograph as many animals as I do, as many different species as I do, and I try to share as many of those encounters with you guys as possible. But there's just some times where an encounter happens so quickly, uh, I just focus on getting photos and video footage of those animals rather than doing the whole vloggy thing. And uh, some encounters you know, are more prolonged and I'm out there for days or even weeks at a time looking for different animals, but for various reasons, I just don't do a video about them. So in this week's video, I wanted to share with you guys some of my favorite encounters from this year so far. These have been really hard to choose just because I've had so many species that I have been able to photograph and spend time with. It's been hard for me to narrow down and choose, you know, my top few favorites but uh, I, I chose some. Some of these encounters you may already be familiar with if you've seen some of my previous videos, but uh, some of these encounters, nobody's seen any footage of it so far. Uh, I haven't posted any images anywhere, any videos, so these will be brand new encounters. I'm excited to share these with you and hope that you enjoy them. Let's jump right in. So let's start things off with one of these encounters that I haven't shared any uh, footage of so far. No pictures, no uh, video footage, anything like that. Earlier this year, I posted a video where I was out looking for some river otters and I had built a uh, blind out of the natural vegetation around me and spent a few days out there hoping to photograph these, these river otters as they were passing through this area. Uh, there was one of those days where I spent some time exploring a different area a different location and I was out hiking and I noticed off in the distance in the water there was a river otter swimming and it was dragging something behind it and I was so confused it was still pretty far off and I couldn't tell what it was dragging it was having a hard time uh, moving through the water so I hurriedly made my way over to uh, kind of try to intercept it a little bit and I was able to do so and it came up on this like rocky area and it pulled a gull, a seagull, out of the water that it had captured and it just started tearing into it. It was, it was insane. Uh, such a crazy experience watching that otter just devour the seagull that it had caught. And that alone was just amazing, that encounter there. But then it got even better. So I'm sitting there watching this otter just filming the whole thing and uh, all of a sudden I hear something behind me and I see this otter kind of looking over periodically. So I look behind and there's, uh, I believe it was three more otters came in and joined this otter. He tried protecting his, his prize from these other otters as they came in, but uh, they came in and joined him and they all started eating this skull. And I was just thinking to myself, this is absolutely incredible. What are the chances? I've got four otters here. And uh, same thing happened just a little while later. I hear something behind me, I look over, and there were five more otters coming in. So in total, in that encounter, that morning, I had nine otters, nine river otters, come in and start to eat that goal. And I wasn't in a blind or anything, which was just absolutely amazing. I was hidden a little bit behind some vegetation, and I had my lens sticking out. I 
I made do with what I had in the area to work with. But that morning was just phenomenal. And I focused mainly on getting video footage of those otters as they uh, ate that seagull. But I was able to get some pictures that I was really happy with as well. Otters, like I said before, are just amazing animals. And there's a reason I spend so much time looking for them each year because they are so much fun to photograph and to spend time with. And that encounter was absolutely amazing. Another one of my favorite encounters from this year was one that I posted a video about just a few weeks ago. Uh, it was from some time spent out in the desert with a family of burrowing owls. Burrowing owls were one of my no excuse species this year. And what I mean by that is each year I come up with a list of animals that I'm going to focus on to try to photograph and get some video footage of. And for years now I have had burrowing owls on my list and for whatever reason something always comes up and I'm unable to photograph them, whether that's just not being able to find a family to photograph or there's another species that I'm focusing on so much that I miss my window for being able to fo uh, photograph and observe the, these burrowing owls. So this year my no excuse species, meaning that no matter what happened throughout the year, I would get burrowing owls. They were one of my, my no excuse species, so I spent a lot of time out looking for them this year and finally was able to photograph just this very tolerant family of burrowing owls. I came out with a video just a little while ago of the process of getting those images. So if you haven't seen that already, go check it out. It's a super fun video. I had so much fun filming that and just spending time out with those burrowing owls. But uh, this family was just amazing. They. Uh, like I mentioned before, were very tolerant of my presence, which the other families that I had seen this year weren't at all. So it was very refreshing to be able to photograph this beautiful family of owls out in the desert and have them be totally comfortable with my presence there as I did so.
All right, let's talk foxes for a while. You know, this area up here that I'm exploring is a wonderful area. It's very special to me because this was the first area where I ever saw a red fox in the wild. And I just thought it was the most beautiful animal I'd ever seen. It had its big fluffy winter coat and uh, I was able to photograph, or I was able to see it uh, that first time. And then later the next spring, I was able to find a backcountry den back here. And that was the first fox den that I ever photographed. And it was just an amazing experience. Earlier this year, earlier this spring, I had such a fun time photographing another fox den. This is another video that I came out with a couple of months ago now where I described the process of photographing that fox den. And this fox den was a little bit different than the one that I pho photographed out here in this uh, backcountry area in that the fox den out there was pretty much in the middle of town, uh, in the middle of a field. And so the process of photographing that den was quite different. Uh, the conditions that I had to work with were different than photographing a uh, den out here. Again, if that's a video that you haven't seen yet, go check it out because uh, I talk about photographing wildlife in a setting like that, more of an urban setting, and the benefits that come along with it. And so go check that video out, and I'll also explain how to do so in a more ethical way, uh, putting those foxes first. Anyways, that fox den out there was absolutely incredible. Uh, there were quite a few kits out there, quite a few babies. I think the most that I counted one night was 13 uh, just little kits running around and there were so many of them that there were multiple uh, dens in proximity to each other that were being used and these kits would run around from den to den and they would actually den at night um, and throughout the day in in these different dens. Handfuls of these kits would kind of stick to different dens so they all had somewhere safe to stay and it was just so much fun photographing and filming these red foxes. They are so much fun to watch as they played and wrestled around. Uh, Dad would come in and deliver food periodically, which was so fun to see. Uh, Mom was a little bit more nervous, so anytime I saw her trying to approach, I would leave and watch from further distance until she had fed them and then left again. And then I would come back in and get some more footage. Uh, always striving to put those foxes first, but that den was just so much fun to photograph and I hope I can have another experience like that in the future. The next encounter that I had was actually a series of encounters. And again, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll already be familiar with these encounters. But it was a series of encounters with multiple minks. Uh, minks were a species that I never even dreamed of photographing this spring. I was headed out to this area to go uh, scout out to photograph some ducks and whatnot. And 
you know, halfway there, I just felt so strongly that you need to go to this other area and look around for a little bit. And so, you know, I turned around and headed to that area. I didn't know what I was supposed to be looking for or why I felt that I needed to go out there, but I went out there and uh, started looking around and I had this chance encounter with this mink I saw running along the, the bank of the river. So I spent some time observing him and was able to kind of document and track his patterns. And over the next uh, days, I was able to watch as he would go in and fish and catch these fish and drag them back to his little burrow. And it was just amazing. And then that encounter, uh, based on the, the information that I was able to document and observe, I was able to use that information uh, and those series of encounters to then go out and find some other minks in a similar area. And I went out and I actually found a whole family of minks, a family of five, and it was amazing. I got to spend time observing them as they played. Uh, Mom would go out and hunt and bring back uh, fish occasionally. Uh, once she brought back a little rodent, I couldn't really tell what it was, some sort of mouse or vole or something. Uh, but watching those uh, mink kits as they played and wrestled around and swam around in the water. It was just fantastic. And like I would mentioned, I never even dreamed of photographing minks uh, this spring or summer. And so that series of experiences was amazing. That chance encounter with that first mink led to just weeks of exploring and finding and filming and photographing these other minks. And it was just fantastic. The last encounter or series of encounters that I wanted to share with you guys in this week's video is another series of encounters that I actually haven't shared any footage of so far. Uh, no video footage, no photos, anything like that. It was a series of encounters that took place over an extended period of time. This is a species that I spend more time looking for than any other species. Uh, I probably spend more time looking for these guys than most other species combined. Uh, I dedicate multiple months out of the year just looking for this species to hopefully film and photograph. After wolves, this is my favorite animal species out there. Wolves being a 10, this species probably like a 9.99. <laughs> so they're right up there with wolves. Uh, the animal that I'm talking about are kit foxes, uh, also known as desert kit foxes. This is a species that for years now, I have just spent immense amounts of time looking for in hopes to photograph. And this year out of all the years so far was the most productive and I was just so richly blessed to be able to spend time with multiple kit fox families. The thing that makes these animals so difficult to photograph is their populations in my area, they're actually declining pretty rapidly. So I've had to extend my search uh, over multiple states, actually. So I spend a lot of time exploring multiple states within the western United States just to find and photograph these beautiful foxes. 
and uh, they're unique in a number of different ways. I'll come out with uh, another video about them, a more in-depth video about them down the road uh, that kind of explains how they're unique, how they survive in those arid environments that they live in. Uh, like their name implies, they're a species that lives in the desert. And so they've got a number of uh, special adaptations that allow them to survive in those arid environments where other animals can't. Uh, I just find them fascinating though. I'm absolutely in love with kit foxes and I have been for years. And uh, I had such a fun time with them this year. Uh, I've had some pretty heart-wrenching moments out with them. And uh, this year, you know, I had some as well. But at the same time, I just had some amazing moments with them. I was able to get quite a bit of video footage and photos throughout a different variety of landscapes, which was amazing. And I just had so much fun spent uh, time spent out with these beautiful, beautiful desert kit foxes. Like I mentioned before, this year has been absolutely amazing. I've been so blessed that I've been able to spend so much time out looking for these beautiful species that I've showed you, uh, as well as all the other species that I show you on a weekly basis in my videos. I have had so much fun and just been so uh, richly blessed with all these amazing encounters of these amazing animals. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'd love to hear from you guys what have been some of your favorite species that you've been able to get out and photograph this year or any time really. I want to thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. I appreciate your support so much. I know I say that pretty much every week, but I need you guys to know that I truly do appreciate your support here on YouTube and on the other platforms that I'm on as well. If you haven't already, go head over to my website and subscribe to my periodic emails. I don't like getting a whole lot of spam emails, so I won't send out a whole bunch of emails as well. But periodically I will send out some emails with some exciting news and announcements, and I'm going to have some coming up here soon with some exciting announcements of things that I've been working on. So head over to my website, I've got a link to it in the description below and subscribe to my emails there if you haven't already. Again, I appreciate the support. I hope you guys are staying safe out there and able to get out and explore and photograph some fun species. Have fun while you're doing it, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.